Miss Squash could win a gourd. Could win an a gourd. Pronounce it a gourd. This squash could win an a gourd. It is so good. Hi, I'm Callie, a professional food stylist, and this is the show where I teach you how to style food to look amazing for social media. It's time to plate it perfect. Today is all about squash. We are gonna make the most beautiful roasted squash, and I'm gonna show you all the tips to making it look fantastic. So the beautiful thing about delicata squash is that it's super easy to cut. So it's not like butternut squash where we're like hauling in this massive acorn of a vegetable and like using a butcher and you're calling in your meat cleaver and whamming it. That's not what we're doing here. We're delicate, it's delicata squash. So. You just take your squash and you're just gonna cut straight into it. Now, don't go hammering out like this because I don't want you ended up in the emergency room. The best way to cut a squash is to go ahead and start in the middle and then cut into it from there. And then once you have that cut right there, then you can stack it and cut through it. The next step, I wanna show you what it looks like. So this is the inside of the delicata squash. You see all these beautiful little seedlings, the future squash of America? We're taking those out. So you're gonna use a spoon, scrape them all out so it's nice and smooth. When you're cutting the squash pieces, try and cut them like at about the same size, like maybe about a half an inch. But it's kind of nice to me to see it not perfect because you want it to feel kind of natural and rustic like you're in your little English cabin in the woods roasting your squash. So when you cut it, just kind of try and aim. I aim for about a half inch. Some vegetables, when you're roasting them, if you notice that they don't quite brown like you want them to, add a little bit of sugar. About a half teaspoon of sugar goes a long way in making a vegetable brown. Add some sugar to it, it'll work. So we're gonna take our squash half moons and we're gonna toss them with oil. When you put oil on your veg that you're gonna roast in the oven for the most beautiful photo, you wanna use an oil that's clear. Here I have macadamia nut oil, but you could use olive oil, you could use vegetable oil. You just don't wanna use an oil that's like super pigmented because it'll adjust the color of your vegetables a little bit. Toss that oil on there and you wanna get them pretty oiled up. There's a a lot of jokes you can make <laughs> going to. And evenly coat them with the oil because when you coat the whole vegetable with the oil, then it will roast up nice and pretty and get real caramelized -y. After you oil your squash, you're gonna add some salt. I love flaky salt. It's got a beautiful texture to it um, and it's a lot prettier than like your tiny iodized salt, which tastes like garbage, so don't be eating that anyway. We're gonna toss this on our squash, kind of get some good chunks and I love like, look at this guy. He's amazing. And then you're gonna put some pepper. I like the coarse ground pepper because it shows up better in your photo and it adds some dimension. And we're gonna toss this all up like that, get it all evenly coated. You'll see in the bowl, you will you might leave some oil in there like from tossing your squash. Actually save that oil because it looks really pretty when we go to do the final photo. We'll kind of paint it on the squash, which looks really cool. All right guys, now it's time to put our squash onto the baking sheet. This is a parchment line baking sheet and we have our oven at 425 degrees. You really don't wanna go much higher than 450 because they're gonna get brown too fast and they're gonna not be cooked all the way. When you put them on the cookie sheet, make sure you give them room to breathe. It's like when you roast any vegetable, you wanna make sure there's space around it so they can get really nice and crispy. If you're all cramped into a compact smart car, you might look a bit like that. And everybody's hot and sweaty and it's not a good situation. When they get too cramped together, the air isn't able to circulate around them and they get kind of mushy they don't look as pretty. And we're all about doing this for the pretty factors. And another tip, when you're roasting vegetables, do one vegetable at a time. If you throw like broccoli and squash and something else in the bowl together, it's not gonna cook as evenly and it's not gonna taste as good. Vegetables were really designed when you roast them to stand on their own. And now these are ready to bake. All right, we got our squash nice and roasted and we are ready to style this up. I'm gonna invite our Uncle Herb to the party for this dish. Also, everything bagel seasoning. This is the jam, y'all. It has pieces of garlic, it has sesame seeds, it has flaky salt, it's got a great texture to it. When I'm styling the squash, I'm looking for the pieces that got nice and golden brown. And they even have some charring on the edges because I think those are beautiful. And I also love when I'm styling to see the skin, the dynamic color of the green and the yellow. So when I'm plating it, I'm probably gonna put some pieces with skin, like more upwards towards the camera. And I'm just gonna keep on going to all this is in a pretty pattern. Some squash pieces will be up, some squash pieces will be turned, kind of to make it interesting. The next step is we are gonna put some herbs on here. I chose thyme because thyme is fine. I like using a mix of leaves and stems because it just creates some visual interest. 
And sometimes if you see the whole stem, it's like, oh, that's clearly thyme. So you just wanna scatter these herbs around kind of organically, however they fall. I think that looks the prettiest. Now it's time for the everything bagel seasoning. You know, when I'm not eating this by the spoonful or putting on avocado toast, I love to use it for styling and just lightly sprinkle it. So with this everything bagel seasoning, you really just took your squash to the next level. This is like a food styling pro tip. A lot of people just stick with salt and pepper and that's cool, but we really wanna go to the next level and this is food styling 101. You wanna create as many textures and layers to a food as you can. It's never just the sliced squash. It's never just the hamburger. You're looking for ways that you can add depth and dimension and color and interest to the photo. All right, now we are ready to take a photo of this beautiful squash. But before we do, I'm gonna make some finishing touches. One is this oil that we used earlier to toss the squash in. We saved it because it gets some great little bits of salt and pepper in it. And then I just added a little bit more oil from my handy dandy spray bottle that I always use into this bowl. And then I like to use the oil and kind of paint it on the squash. I love oil on vegetables like this because it picks up the light from the window and it looks beautiful on camera. All right, y'all, that looks beautiful. I may add some extra salt because when you oil the vegetables, the salt kind of disappears. So just for some extra texture. And then final touches, we are gonna add a linen into the shot. I love this gray with the green. It's a pretty color combo like the little tassels, kind of tuck that tag in. And then also, this is um, our Uncle Herb, so I'm just gonna kind of tuck this behind, add a little nice pop of green behind the window, looks great. Food doesn't have to be covered in bacon and cheese to look good. Squash is just as beautiful, plated like this, I love it.